So how would you like to go from cloud zero to cloud hero in just three months? I'll tell you how to do that. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek, and here to tell you about the truth of cloud computing and the use of generative AI. Let's get started. Well, this is going to be a fun one. This is uh, actually uh, derived from a conversation I've had a few months ago with somebody who was going to take a sabbatical from their job as a teacher and uh, was going to take three months off and wanted to pivot their career to cloud computing and wanted to know if they could learn everything they should know in order to be a cloud computing professional in that amount of time. In other words, someone who's not understanding much around, about the technology and what it is, other than the words and how to pronounce it, uh, to someone that actually can go get a job as a competent individual that can work for a particular company. So I took it on as a challenge. And so what we're going to do in this video is outline the training plan uh, the learning plan for a three-month period of time where you can go from not understanding anything about cloud computing to be ready to get a cloud computing job. So this is going to be a focus plan. It's, it's not a boot camp. Uh, I'm not pushing you off to one course or another. It's not a single uh, source of learning to get to this, but it's going through a set of training criteria that you really need to do to understand how this technology works and how to get a job and uh, work in this industry. So I'm preparing you to go off and get a job and looking at this. And, and this individual who took three months off followed a training plan and indeed did that. At the end of three months, was able to get themselves an entry-level job in, in the cloud computing industry, and they're still in there today growing their career. So let's talk about what needs to be done in order to do that. So you have to look at a few things besides the training plan. Number one, are you prepared? Are you willing to put the time and effort into doing this? And obviously it's going to be a uh, great deal of commitment on your part to learn and take the training. Do you have the time? Uh, can you take a sabbatical? Can you take vacation? Uh, do you have the time off to spend the time training? Normally six to eight hours a day, but it could be more. And also, do you have the motivation? In other words, is this something you're willing to go through to get to a goal that you're looking to achieve? And also, do you have the ability? In other words, do you think you have the aptitude to learn about this technology and the ability to stick with it throughout the entire training plan so you get to a point where you're going to be able to get a job in the cloud computing industry doing whatever? And we'll talk about that. So what do you do in the first month? Well, I would look at the foundations of cloud computing. In other words, the basics, the, the bare minimum, what you need to understand to have a conversation as a cloud computing professional, and, and perhaps even beyond, I think, what a lot of professionals know out there, uh, where they don't have a good, uh, substantial, uh, fundamental understanding of cloud computing. So first, look at the core services. We're going to understand compute, storage, data, and networking fundamentals. you got to remember that we're learning any way we, we should learn. People are going to learn differently. Sometimes you're going to uh, take classes like my LinkedIn learning classes or classes um, you know, out on, uh, on Simply Learn or even YouTube. There's free cloud computing classes out there. Um, find the courses and the pace and the content that best accommodates you as a learner. Some people like to learn through reading, reading books. That's how I learned. Uh, that's before uh, we had videos. Uh, that's fine as well. Uh, some people like to learn through audio, audio podcasts, things like that. But as long as you get a foundational understanding of kind of the core concepts of cloud computing, we'll go over them here. So you should understand storage, how those work, object block, uh, file-based storage, data, D different databases out there, how data stored and retrieved, and some of the networking fundamentals that are there, processing fundamentals, how compute works, platform allocation, things like that. There's a lot to go through there, and, and take your time in understanding some of the fundamentals. you got to remember you have a month to do all this stuff, so that's a, that's, that's a pretty good chunk of time. Also, make sure to understand security and governance. Make sure to learn cloud security compliance, best practices. What does security mean? How is it used in the context of cloud computing? What's governance mean? How it used in the context of cloud computing? All that should get the basics of understanding. You don't have to be a genius in cloud security. You don't have to be a cloud security engineer or expert, but understand enough 
that you can have a conversation with a client uh, about how this stuff works. Understand the migration processes, applications, data, how they move from on-premises into the cloud, uh, steps in doing that lift and shift versus refactoring, be able to understand kind of the difference between those those things. Deployment models, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, private cloud, why would you use one versus the other, what they are, examples of them, things like that. Lots of good courses out there on hybrid and multi-cloud, as well as private cloud computing. I certainly have a bunch out on LinkedIn Learning, but uh, you know, use whatever learning service that you, uh, you want to use. Uh, application development and deployment, uh, how we're going to build and deploy applications, uh, either as cloud native systems, things like that, the process of going through. Again, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to understand the details behind DevOps, but understand the basics in terms of how applications are built, deployed, and uh, pushed out into production. And then some hands-on experience. Um, most cloud providers offer free tiers. In other words, a tier where you can learn from. Uh, they'll charge you very little, if not if nothing, and uh, ask them about some sort of an educational discount where you're just getting your hands-on experience with cloud computing. Obviously, it's not going to be loading it up with a bunch of data and uh, using it in production, but you're able to allocate storage. You're able to allocate compute. You're able to configure compute resources. You're able to con configure bind storage resources to compute resources. Um, and in doing that, it, it's kind of the ability to kind of connect a couple of tiers of your brain where you're touching it as well as understanding the concepts and those kinds of things for a lot of people, including myself, they kind of solidify the concepts between cloud computing. So that's our first month, foundations. For the second month, we're going to take a deeper dive uh, into a lot of the concepts we learned in the foundational courses. We're going to look at advanced services. We're going to look at databases, how they work, difference between an object database and a relational database, analytics. Uh, really kind of understanding those capabilities. We're going to understand some of the basics of artificial intelligence. In other words, that doesn't mean jumping directly into generative AI development and deployment, but understand what it is and the different tool sets that are available on cloud providers that facilitate AI. Also, cloud architecture, some of the basics, understanding how we configure uh, cloud computing solutions, how the architecture process works. Again, lots of good courses out there. I have one on LinkedIn Learning, but there's other courses you can find on other services as well, as well as free on YouTube. Um, practical projects, work on a client project example, applying your knowledge. So this is actually you going through by yourself uh, a project. In other words, uh, uh, understand the requirements, understand how to allocate compute, how to size uh, storage, how to get a database bound to the system and the process of putting that on into production and the ability to deal with the operations aspects of it. And there's lots of um, templates that'll guide you through that. And again, do this in a hands-on way on a public cloud provider, whichever one you choose. And again, they provide free tiers for doing this in many instances, but check. Don't send me your cloud bill. Uh, if uh, you've made a mistake and suddenly you get charged for those services. Understand the migration process, deepen your understanding of cloud migration, enable seam seamless transition, perhaps even try to migrate an application to the cloud, a very simple one, hello world. Understand how that works. You're recompiling on the system. Again, uh, links different tiers of your brain and you get a better understanding. And then also understanding some of the cloud native technologies out there. So containers, very important. Serverless computing, orchestration, Kubernetes, other cloud native approaches. I would learn them at a conceptual level. Uh, I don't think you have to have hands-on uh, training in those areas yet, but you should be able to differentiate what a container is and what it does and why you would use it and the ability to have a discussion around why we're going to leverage that stuff. Also thought leadership. Start the thinking in terms of if I'm going to own this particular career path, I need to lead thought in the space and start writing articles, share your insights around cloud computing, You know, perhaps even write a, a blog in terms of your learning experience, uh, what you found difficult to learn, what you found easy to learn, ways that you found to learn best. And so you're putting a presence out there and having a brand presence that people can follow out on social media. And you certainly can put these out on you know free sites like Substack and LinkedIn, uh, they'll host articles, and you'll find that lots of people are interested in them. If you write an article, you put a post that I just wrote this article about my learning journey, or I just wrote this article about how I see containers impacting cloud-based development. Those are interesting things, and also uh, will exercise, again, another part of your brain. And also, in many instances, and certainly in my instance, you're stretching your limitations. You're doing something 
that is not necessarily in your personality to do. And by doing that, it allows you to reach out, become a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more better communicator, the ability to write better, and the ability to deal with people. So the thought leadership stuff should be part of this as well in month two. So in month three, we specialize in something we practice. You got to remember that uh, cloud computing is not just being a cloud computing professional where you know a little bit about a lot of stuff. Uh, it's about typically specialization in certain disciplines around cloud computing. You can be a security architect, a security engineer, an AI architect, AI engineer, cloud architect, uh, cloud computing engineer, application development, uh, database development. All these things are open to you. So you, you need to pick a path, very much like uh, in the medical profession. You'll find that even though there are general practitioners out there, uh, most of the doctors are going to specialize in something, podiatry, gynecology, uh, urologists, things like that. The same thing here. Pick a path. Uh, so align your goals with the specialized tracks like cloud engineering, architect, developer. Figure out what interests you, what excites you. Um, and so these are some of the options you can go down, learn about DevOps services, learn DevOps continuous cloud application. I recommend you learn some of the basics here if that's not going to be your specialization. But if it is, it's a great, uh, great place to learn different DevOps tools that are out there, tool chains that cloud providers provide. Uh, deepen your understanding about security if you want to take a security path. You want to be a security engineer, a security architect. How does security work? Encryption, identity access management how these things work in the uh, on the cloud providers. Um, you can certainly specialize in one particular cloud provider like AWS, Microsoft, or Google, but um, you know, keep your mind open at least at this stage because you're going to be exposed to many different job opportunities and they're gonna use many different cloud platforms. And so you don't wanna lock yourself into a particular platform uh, if you're going to find that job opportunities are on another platform. Some, some people, there's a case to be made about doing that because, again, you can go through some certification stuff after we go through this three-month process, which will get you deeper into a particular cloud provider's native services. But I would be a little bit more open-minded now, a little bit uh, kind of keep it in a non-biased uh, uh, way. Look at AI ML services, uh, artificially intelligent and machine learning expertise, leverage AI and ML on the cloud. Do some pilot projects. They have some sample projects you can work on out there that the cloud providers provide. Go through a few of those. Uh, go through a comprehensive project. Apply your skills in a real world cloud scenario. Again, kind of taking what we did last month in terms of the first project that you're working yourself to the next level. You know, walk through what it would take to uh, uh, take an application that's on premises put it into the cloud and containerize it. What would step what steps would be involved in doing that? And just think through it and learn as you go. This is some this is a time when you can actually do something and then learn the expertise, learn the procedures and processes and technologies around that. And then job readiness. Uh, start interviewing for jobs. There's no reason after three months you can't start talking to people who are looking to hire entry level uh, cloud professionals. Um, Again, you're going to have to pick a path because they're normally looking for something and looking for someone to participate with the architecture team, someone to participate uh, with the cloud database uh, uh, design and deployment, the ability to deal with their AI systems that they're building. And all those sorts of things um, are going to be interesting. Pick something you like and start interviewing for jobs. Even if, you, even if you don't get the job, you have the experience in the interview. Uh, you're gonna find that a lot of companies are looking for that you know, year's experience before they hire somebody, but lots of companies out there are willing to give you a chance if they're looking at some of the things that you've done. And I would explain to them your learning journey. In fact, you watched this video and created a learning plan and went off and, and learned yourself, became kind of a self-learner, which is very important, is going to impress a lot of companies. So it certainly would impress me. I would be interested in talking with you uh, because they can build your skills out, uh, whatever you seem to be missing when you join the company, but they can't build your ambition out. You're going to have to be, have the uh, ambition, the ability um, and, and the and the drive and motivation uh, to be good at this. And, and that's probably 80% of it. Uh, you can learn the details and the technology like we're talking about here, but your enthusiasm, your ability to be a continuous learner is going to be much more important to them than a list of tactical skills that you were able to learn. And again, be a continuous learner. In other words, uh, you know, stay up to date with latest cloud trends, news, uh, you know, certainly watching this video is a step in the right direction or watching other videos is a step in the right direction, reading books, keeping up with the market. I think all that's going to be extremely important. So keep that in mind. 
Well, that's all I have this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my LinkedIn learning courses. Also, my AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Check that out. We're having a lot of fun over there. That's a fully mentored course um, where I'm interacting with students four hours a week, uh, just having a ball and doing that. Also, check out my uh, blog on InfoWorld and uh, keep up with what I'm doing. Check me out on LinkedIn. Check me out on Twitter. So until next time, best of luck. You guys take care. Cheers.